There are only a few body chemicals that have made it into the common vernacular. Insulin is one, the other is dopamine. We're always hearing about the fact that our phones give us dopamine hits, and they do. But did you know that meals give beta cells a dopamine hit? And the dopamine hit is a good thing, both for beta cells and the brain. Dopamine motivates us to get things done. The problem is too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing for brains and for beta cells. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Maybe let's just get a little familiar with dopamine. Officially, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. That is, it's associated with neurons and the brain. And most of the time when dopamine is talked about, it is the brain impacts that are front and center because the ticketing system of the nuclear accumbens, which is our so-called reward center, is based on dopamine. So dopamine regulates our behavior, but it also regulates movement. And these two roles are perfectly captured by the two diseases most associated with dopamine troubles, Parkinson's and psychosis. In the case of Parkinson's disease, a very special area in the brain, known as the substantia nigra, is experiencing a crisis. The neurons in this region that make the dopamine are dying off. The why of this is not 100% clear, but the consequence is devastating because these neurons connect to another region of the brain, the stratium, and it is here where dopamine controls movement. And he does this by keeping the peace. His absence causes an imbalance in the level of neurotransmitters, and this impacts movement. It gives people very characteristic shakes, which get worse with each passing year as the number of neurons decreases. Now, psychosis is not quite as easy to describe. Hollywood portrays it as the weirdo, hearing voices and doing terrible things. The person you should be afraid of. Very afraid of. A more biological way to explain it is that the person experiences intrusive thoughts and feelings that make it hard to navigate through the world. And sometimes these thoughts and feelings produce odd behaviors. Now we all have moments when our thoughts and feelings can be overwhelming. But when this is the norm, the person would be described as being psychotic. And the troubles are attributed to there being too much dopamine floating around. But there's so much more to dopamine. It's not just a brain chemical. Beta cells make it. The exact details of how it all happens is still a work in progress. But what is known is dopamine is needed for insulin release to proceed smoothly. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as, as we explore dopamine's critical role in glucose control. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, the trigger for beta cells to make and release dopamine is twofold. Beta cells need glucose and they need L-dopa, both of which will rise when you eat. Now, the extent of the rise will depend on what you eat. Getting the glucose is easy. Carbs will send in a supply. But what about L-dopa? Well, L-dopa is actually shorthand for 3,4-dihydroxyoxyalphenylalanine. For obvious reasons, we will just go with L-dopa. Now, you're not going to find it on the ingredient list of your favorite food because it's homemade. Parts of you making it are the upper digestive tract. Think stomach, duodenum, and ileum. The base ingredient for this is tyrosine. This is one of the standard amino acids that form the structural basis of protein. So anything that is protein will have some. A pair of enzymes whips the tyrosine into L-dopa, which is then released into the circulation. The L-dopa whizzes around the body, 
passing through the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas, where it gets the dopamine synthesis machinery inside the beta cells humming, ensuring that insulin-loaded secretory vesicles include a dollop of dopamine, along with the insulin when the insulin-containing granules are released. That dollop of dopamine drifts down onto the neighboring beta cells, eventually hooking up with dopamine receptors that are located on the outside of beta cells. Now, the presence of this psychotic little neurotransmitter on the doorstep of a beta cell is a little distracting. Beta cells stop what they are doing to check their phones. And when they do this, insulin production ceases. But don't panic. Contrary to what you might think, this is in fact a good thing because the body is heading into the post-absorptive phase, that is, insulin secretion is no longer needed because the groceries have all been delivered. Under normal circumstances, the timing of the dopamine hit is perfect. It helps to boost insulin secretion after the meal when sugar levels are high and then it stops it when enough insulin has been released. In summary, dopamine is the beta cell's off switch. And when you're insulin resistant, this is what you need. When you're metabolically challenged, insulin levels are high morning, noon and night. And it's that nighttime insulin that is a big part of the problem, giving rise to the bad body chemistry. Dopamine keeps beta cell function in check. It works like a charm, except when dopamine's biology is altered, which it is if you're taking dopamine-based medications. Now, the different meds spark different problems. Let's start with the antagonists, which are commonly referred to as antipsychotics. Because in psychosis there is too much dopamine, these meds block or lower dopamine levels in one way or another. The lowering of the dopamine level ends up toning down those invasive thoughts and feelings, but it creates metabolic mayhem. Insulin production is not switched off contributing to insulin resistance and beta cell burnout. In Parkinson's disease, the problem there is too little dopamine in the substantia nigra region because of nerve cell death. The meds used to treat Parkinson's disease put the dopamine back in one way or another. Unfortunately, they don't put the nerves back, so things worsen over time requiring add-on medications. Now, usually at the start of the problem, the substance that is destined to be dopamine, aldopa, also known as levodopa, is given along with a defender. The defender helps ensure that some of the aldopa actually makes it into the brain. Now, together, they make a great team. But despite the precautions, some of that aldopa in the carbidopa pill will pass by the beta cells, triggering the dopamine production factory, facilitating dollops of dopamine release with insulin. Unfortunately, the timing and dose are not quite what Mother Nature ordered, so sugar control can be compromised, particularly when the aldopa is taken just before meals. In this case, the insulin production machine ends up being shut down early. There's just not enough insulin doing the rounds to mop up all the sugar that is circulating, leading to glucose intolerance. This is one of those times to blame it on the meds, not obesity or bad genes per se. Now, there are other drugs that are used to manage Parkinson's disease, besides carbidopa, and as I said, they are typically add-ons. Now, one that is particularly interesting is bromocryptine because it mimics the dopamine at the D2 receptor. And there are formulations of bromocryptine that have been approved as anti-diabetic medications. Quite possibly, some of bromocryptine's benefits are due to its ability to buzz your beta cells. But <laughs> at Better Body Chemistry, we're all about doing things naturally. So what are your options? Well, pinging phones, happy thoughts, and bubble baths 
all change dopamine levels. The trouble is that they change the dopamine levels in your head, not in your body. So this biology is not particularly helpful when it comes to modulating glucose control directly. Unfortunately, the options to change dopamine in your body are limited. But the one thing that you can and should do is obey the rule of thirds. Make sure that every time you eat, you include some protein. Among the many benefits of the protein will be a dopamine hit. And of course, the timing will be perfect. If you are taking dopamine-based meds, be especially sensitive to the timing of your medication relative to your meals. If you're taking an antipsychotic, I have a video that will walk you through the details. Aish, it's complicated. Need some help figuring everything out? Why not book a day of Voxer with me? Using my extensive knowledge of biology and drugs, I can help you formulate a biology-based plan to optimize your health through better body chemistry. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone whose beta cells could do with a dopamine hit? Share this video with them. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.